Tonight's guest is Master Martin Fitzjames, the scribe Armarius of Cayid, and featuring a live performance by Viscountess Ciela Thorsdotter from the Kingdom of the West. You smell that? That must be the 90 degree fall weather, and that means I'm Master Bjorn of the Northern Sea, your announcer. And here's your host, Master Laertes McBride. Greetings and good evening. Welcome to the show. Uh, I don't know what 90 degree fall weather has to do with Bjorn, but you know. Anyway, so I uh, hope everyone's had a good week. Uh, as most of our Kaid viewers know, this would be the pack down and get off site day of Great Western War. So uh, I've really enjoyed seeing a lot of the photos that people have posted from prior years, celebrating the spirit of Great Western, uh, the camaraderie that we're missing from getting together in a large group, and looking all the people that are looking forward to what's going to lie ahead next year, where hopefully we'll be able to get together and celebrate the kingdom and, um, you know, kill a lot of people. So anyway, well, that'd be weird out of context, wouldn't it? Um, that's what I have. So let's go ahead and bring in um, Bjorn and see how he's doing. He'll be here in right about now. Good evening, Bjorn. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? You know, well enough. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the whole smelling thing was, uh, was I got up this morning and there was only the, the sousson of burn in the air. And then there was the, it's still sunscreen, but pumpkin spice. So that is why I'm saying it's 90 degrees in fall because we're, we're supposed to be hitting cooler weather, but it's still in the 90 degrees. And that's just categorically unfair, especially for someone who I, I, I was born for winter. That's my job. <laughs> it can't be less than 90 degrees because it's Great Western War Weekend. I mean, that would be ridiculous if it was cool and comfortable. Exactly. This is the time we'd all pack out and find some place that had air conditioning and iced tea on the way and have one person nervously looking out to make sure no one was eyeing the uh, seven foot ridge poles too longingly. Um, and the truck. So yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, I, I was actually talking to Master Martin earlier about uh, Black Bear Diner there right before you come through the Grapevine Pass, uh, where we always would always seem to run into each other coming back home from uh, the event. So anyway, um, so what do you have for us this week for the Arts and Sciences highlight? Well, uh, two things. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was this really neat series of seminars that are being done by the Institute of Historical Research at the University of London. Now, these are food history seminars. And we just got finished with Great Western War. Those of you that went by our encampment last year, we were in the arts and science area, you know that there was a lot of period cooking that we do. And um, in Kaid, laurels have a primary and a secondary, and my secondary is culinary. Mundanely, I am a pastry chef. So cooking, and especially period food, is something that I really enjoy uh, studying and learning about. And uh, it's, it's really a lot of fun to see seminars done by uh, clinicians and historians working together. And the food history seminars that they have at the University of London in their School of Advanced Study are truly fantastic. Now, these are set up online via Zoom. They're, they're sort of team-taught classes. I should let you know that they are on Thursdays, not every Thursday. There, there's a list. Uh, the schedule is, is um, on the website they're provided. Uh, and they're on Thursday afternoon slash evenings if you're in London, your Greenwich Mean Time. If you're on the East Coast, it's 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. So that means that if you're here in California, it's 9.30 to 10.30 a.m., uh, which honestly, I think if you've just had breakfast, this is a great time to go, I wonder what I could do now. So they have um, three main things to, to, to look at. Uh, what you have seen, uh, what you see on the, the, um, the screen now is their... Um, their food history seminars page that talks about what the seminars are and where they are as far as the term. Um, and then you can go through and look at their WordPress uh, uh, website, which then directs you to their YouTube channel. And what's important about that is 
if you will note, uh, for those of you that are that like can split screen or look at things on your phone while you're watching the show, you'll see that in term one on October 1st, in other words, the show, uh, rather the class that was just done was called Bread and Gender in Early Medieval England. And uh, it was done on October 1st. That is already up on their YouTube channel. So it's it's been a little over a week, but they have a pretty decent turnaround to get these classes um, edited and then placed on their website. But there's going to be some wonderful things this first term. Processed food, food, the body and culture, um, uh, Scottish food, ferments and sweets. Uh, and it's, it's truly a magnificent uh, resource. Um, and from what I understand, this is something that they will probably continue to do in their school of advanced study for the foreseeable future because they are they're they're saying that they have a lot of response from people all across the world who are really enjoying uh, these seminars and it, it does look a lot like one of our collegiums or one of our rural universities so it's something that um, i personally think uh, a lot of us that enjoy looking at medieval food uh, we can we can truly uh, have a good time with this so the second website i wanted to talk about this comes from uh, Scott Rank. Uh, he's a PhD um, uh, in uh, history and is the editor of uh, the History on the Net and also of the History Unplugged podcast. He has a really neat website that's called Medieval Farming and the Farming Year. Now, I bring this up even though that's as hands-on as many of us are. I mean, we had... Um, uh, we have Master Martin with us later, who does a lot of uh, pewter work, and uh, we just had um, Sir Niccolo, who was showing us about working with um, Damascus billets and making swords and such. So we do a lot of hands on the SCA. One of the things we don't do as often uh, necessarily is uh, farming. We don't do a lot of farming. We do occasionally have sheep to shawl, where people will uh, shear a sheep and then uh, comb the wool and spin the wool and dye the wool and and, and make uh, you know make items out of it usually shawls hence the term but we don't really get into like food production that much and when we do it's usually honey and even then it's for mead so this is sort of a what did they do at what time of year now when you first open the website there is literally a wheel for the season what happens in January when you are repairing any implements, when you're starting to plant the winter crops, um, when you're weaving thatch or you're working on, on the, the wattle and daub uh, um, uh, walls that are in, in perhaps the pen enclosures for your animals. What are you doing in May? Well, there's more weeding and uh, scaring birds. It's actually a thing because scarecrows didn't always happen. We, we think they do now, but they had to come from somewhere. And uh, this... There's information about that. Where are we right now? We're in October. So that's the sewing, milling, and weaving. A lot of weaving going on. Milling, or the milling of corn, even though in our, it's more like wheat, is just what did they grind to make bread? Spelt, millet, oat, barley, and all that information is there. And it's something for you to look at and see how did it get to the medieval table. It doesn't go into a lot of detail about the necessary differences between uh, a miller's table and the royal table, but it does talk about what happens at the base level. And so since this is allegedly the time of year when that thing happens, this is a website that is definitely, uh, it, it has specificity in its information. But for those of you that are looking into, I don't know, writing fiction or looking into various aspects that might be tangential to a research project, then I think this is a pretty good website for you. And so those are the two websites we have for this week, and I hope that you enjoy them and they give you as much fun as they gave me. Yeah, it sounds like you've really harvested a good crop of websites for us this week. I, I did have to separate one. the wheat from the chaff. Yes, sir. I got another one. Um, oh, the, uh, the bread and gender the bread and ginger seminar that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting any, any way you slice it. So anyway, you're welcome. I saved, I even wrote that one down. I thought it was so good. So um, anyway, so who's our first guest this evening? We have with us uh, 
uh, Master Martin Fitzjames. He is the scribe Armarius of Kaid. Uh, he recently, uh, well, I guess the time before now, he also was the uh, former secretary of the Order of the Laurel. So he's he's a busy fella. He's always doing something for the kingdom, and and uh, we're we're very fortunate to have someone who is so indebted to the service of the arts in our kingdom. All right, so I'll uh, turn off your video, and let's welcome. Uh, let's welcome our guest to the show. So he'll be here and right now. Hello, Hello. Master Martin. Hi. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. So you're up in uh, um, Winter you Mist. Know, Winter Mist. That whole, I was going to say Bakersfield. So uh, you're a little warm. Yeah, yeah. So um, how long so have you been? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, last week we did have two really nice days that would have fallen on Friday and Saturday of war. So they were in the 70s. Oh, wow. Supposedly. Nice. You, could you feel the ocean breeze? No. <laughs> <laughs> the air quality was still horrible. Oh, true. So um, first off, what exactly are the responsibilities of the scribe on Marius? So the scribe Armarius is uh, mostly administrative job. I um, my job is to get uh, scroll assignments in people requesting you know that they want an award scroll done for them, and then to get a scribe to be assigned to it, and occasionally you know push the scribe to okay you need to get that done. So it's mostly administrative job. I also uh, receive the scrolls, seal them, make sure you know that there are no errors, and then you know present them in court. And now, aren't they normally presented like at Twelfth uh, Night? Uh, uh, generally at coronations. Uh, it depends on how many scrolls we're getting any uh, any particular year. Sometimes we'll do it three times a year. Sometimes just two. So, if you were to guess, how about how many do y'all? Uh, generate a year, would you say? It really varies rain by rain, year by year. Um, we've had ones where we've had 40 in a rain, 50 in a rain. Wow. And some of them we have 10, 15. It really depends on the scribes are entirely voluntary. They're, you know, they're working with their own materials, using their own time. And it really depends on, you know, the, what the scribes are able to do. Right. And how many scribes we have active? We're well, always looking for new scribes. <laughs> I, I, uh, you, know, you should see my handwriting. But anyway, um, so one of the things I thought was always so impressive is taking the opportunity to look at the scrolls that were presented in court because you always mm -hmm. usually put them on display in one of the common areas and yes. just uh, look at the work and the dedication and the talent that's on display. As you say, it's purely volunteer and. Um, it's pretty amazing to see the talent that we have in the kingdom. Scrolls can take anywhere from, you know, 20 to 100 hours to make. So each one is, you know, a, a significant investment of the scribe's time and energy. Right. And um, and your position is kind of, is it, is it, or you have counterparts in other kingdoms or is it more uh, yeah, kind of unique to here? The general uh, role is called a signet. Uh, and yeah, there are, there's generally somebody in every kingdom because every kingdom has their own rules and traditions regarding scrolls. Right, right. Now, are you appointed for life? Is that how the position works? <laughs> until, until the job kills me, you mean? Um, no, uh, generally it's a, it's a normal kingdom office, two plus years, you know. And then do you report to the, uh, Crescent Herald, is that? A yeah, the, I, I report to the Crescent Herald. Oh, wow. I'm <laughs> her. um, so um, one, one of the things I had to say, so if I've received a promissory or, you know, the mm -hmm. scroll that comes when I get a recognition, right. and I would like to request a scroll, how, how would I go about that? There's really uh, two really good ways of doing that. One, I actually posted a link in this meeting uh, for a Google document that you can fill out, which is really easy and it gives me all the information. The other way is to actually email me 
and I, I say email, not Facebook message or anything like that, because I need a permanent record of it. Uh, but email me at the Scribe Marius email address, and then I'll add it to the database. But you could also just uh, approach a scribe, I guess. And oh, that is actually uh, uh, totally valid, too. Uh, find a scribe you like. You know, say, will you make a scroll for me? Will you put me on your back uh, log? You know, will you do a scroll for me, you know, when you have chance? That's a great way of doing it. It's also great to, to then tell me so I write that down. So I, I still have that information. I'll make a notation that it's a personal commission. So, you know. So if I were to submit for one, would I say, oh, and I would like this scribe to work on it? Or do you kind of put it on a list and people pick and choose? How, how's that? The, that's actually a form, uh, uh, a line on the Google Doc. If you want a particular scribe to work for it, you can uh, write down that scribe. Or if you're emailing me, you say you arranged with a particular scribe. Um, or you can just say, I'd like it done in a particular style. Do you want 16th century Irish uh, or, you know, something like that? Uh, you can have that request too. And if I wanted it on like dried flesh, I could make that request too, right? Yeah, if you want it on vellum or anything else. Uh, depending on what the scribe is available to do, um, you might need to work out a bartering system because vellum can be a little pricey. Um, right. But because as I said, scribes are doing this all <laughs> on their own. So. And then for, for the College of Scribes, do you all have like um, meetings or opportunities for people that want to get involved doing the scribal arts? To, to learn? I mean, I'm sure there's something going on online, isn't there? Actually, right now, there's a great opportunity. Every Tuesday, Mistress Alice Sky is ha holding a Zoom meeting, and it's alternating between classes and just hangouts where you talk about stuff and ask questions. So um, those are great uh, opportunity. You can find information on that on the Kind Scribes uh, Facebook page. And she, I believe she posted it in Kingdom and Kite Arts and Sciences as well. It's a great way of just dipping your toe in and seeing, uh, am I interested in this? You know, can I try it out? All right. So if, um, how, how did you get drawn in, uh, get drawn into doing this? <laughs> uh, I was an artist before I joined the SCA, low those many years ago. But actually, I took a collegiate class from Mistress Alskai a long time ago. Uh, and it sort of piqued my interest because it you know, went with what I was uh, uh, you know, already familiar with and everything else. Though you taught, mentioned your uh, handwriting. I, I got really bad marks at handwriting in school too, but calligraphy is a little bit different and I do fine with that. So is the artwork that's over your shoulder something you did? Uh, yeah, that is... Uh, I had a, square, a spare piece of canvas, and so I did a St. George. It's based off the uh, Pomeganter altar from uh, Durer, and I did it just because it looks like he's dragging the uh, the dragon home like a stuffed animal. So it it amused me. Well, that's awesome. Oh, well, I you know at this point of the conversation, I, it's time for much better questions than mine. So I'm going to turn it over to Bjorn. He'll be here in just a second. Well, um, thank you so much, Master Martin. I, I have a couple of questions. So is it true that that Mistress Alice Guy is kind of like the once in future Scribe Armarius for like every 10 years, she just grabs it <laughs> for a couple of years and then and then sends it off again into the night? I think it more gets thrust upon her rather than her grabbing it. Uh, <laughs> I think she much prefers to be a deputy and do the type of stuff that she's doing, but if she has to, she'll take it. <laughs> so um, now, when I first started in the SCA uh, in Anstiora and then in Meridias, they they called it the parchment persuivant. Now, since we actually have an official persuivant uh, position in heraldry, uh, I I can understand why Scribe on Mars makes a little more sense. I also know that um, that the name Scribe on Mars was actually coined during the time that Eowyn Amber Drake was in mm -hmm. the position. Um, but 
uh, this position actually started when we were still part of the West. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know that actually. Uh, sounds sounds reasonable. It's it's been around for quite a long time, and you know, it, like a lot of things that Kai has been doing, it has morphed and changed over the years. But uh, the position has stayed. And the last thing is, um, not just for not just for scribes but also for the Laurels, for the Pelicans, for any group that had a, a, um, a meeting online. Uh, the Scribes list used to be on Yahoo, uh, and a lot of other groups did used to be on Yahoo. And then, of course, when Yahoo started stopped their groups, um, that was a, a, a kind of a major hit to a lot of, of our organizations within various kingdoms. What did the... Um, what did the scribes of Kaid do to sort of, uh, I guess, transfer all of the requests and things uh, from Yahoo? Where did you guys go? Well, um, the the request list was never on Yahoo, so that that made it easier. Um, well before my time, uh, I believe Rish Dame Rashenda uh, and Mr. Salisky created a Google Doc that uh, holds all the scribal requests and scribal uh, notes and, and everything else. And so there's a shared Google Doc that we keep all that information. And the Hangout and Share Information portion of Yahoo Groups moved to Facebook. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I... All right. Well, that was the good question part of the day. <laughs> um, so, um, as we're coming to the part of the show which uh, you know everyone enjoys, which is the, the trivia part. So I have a few trivia questions for here. Uh, hey, Bjorn, what are we calling it this week? I believe we're calling it this week, Right On. Yeah, it's a little on the nose, but yeah, I'm, it amused me. So anyway, um, so as part of most of the scrolls, um, I'm sure that people like to um, include the, the, the device for the different mm -hmm. awards, right? So right. I'm going to show you uh, the different devices, and, and you just need to tell me what the awards are. Super easy. Okay. The audience can play along at home. So um, uh, we'll do this one first. You, can you see it on your screen? Sure. So That's which the one is list? That's the duelist, and which is for? Uh, it is the award of arms level award for rapier fighting. That is correct. One for one. I figured you'd know that one, by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, secondly, we have this. That would be the Chiron. I don't know. So there no. we go. And that's four. What? What's that for? Recognition for That what? is the grant level award for archery. Correct. Two for two. See, you got this. So <laughs> the next one. This one you should know too. Which one's that? That is the Master of Defense. That is correct. Now, the funny thing is, okay, so you saw that the AOL level has two swords. And the grant level has one sword. So when you hit the period, <laughs> you have all three. So it's, it's cumulative. Oh, sure. Okay, so this one. That is the chamfron. Okay, and it's for? Duh. That is equestrian. And is it the grant level award? Oh, no. No, oh, it's the AOA level award. It's the, uh, the grant level is? Uh, um, golden okay. Yeah, the golden lance. The, you can tell uh, AOA level awards have embattlement, generally. Oh. Nice. <laughs> and that's the little ring around the outside. Uh, yes. Okay, so this one. But that breaks the thing. That is the Lux Caetus. And yep. that is the grant level award for arts. I know. Uh, it, has, it has another nickname we're going to talk about, right? Now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's badly drawn. Oh, uh, that's true. Um, you can ask us in the comments what that is. <laughs> uh, okay, next to last one, this one. That is the... Um, uh, you're close. You were there. Yeah. Um, Chanson. Yeah. There's more to the, uh, the award though. And I can't think Not of anymore. Oh, they they actually, the yeah. They, they cut they it down. It? Okay. Yeah. This is Chanson. And what's that for? That is a non armigerous award for, uh, singing. Yes. Musical period music. singing. Okay. Last one. Now, this is a badge. This isn't an award. I just thought I'd throw it in here, see if you may, may not. So what's this one? 
That is one of the badges for the College of Scribes. Okay, you got to tell me why we have a seal balancing a pen on its nose. Because that's the seal. That that is you know our old kingdom seal. Right. That so it, you know it has a seal on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! It's the I kingdom. didn't design the heraldry, so it's the kingdom seal. I get it. Yeah, I blame Bruce. Even though he probably <laughs> I blame Bruce for that one. That's so. probably fair. <laughs> well, you did great. You're very good. I'm very impressed. You should. You keep the job for another two years. <laughs> well, Martin, I've had the good fortune to know you for several years, several and decades. Um, I, as um, Bjorn was talking about. You've always been heavily invested and involved in helping people out, whatever your passion is at that time, especially in the arts and sciences field. Uh, thank you for coming on the show and explaining how it works. Uh, we will put, again, the link is in there for how to request scrolls. Mm -hmm. So I, I do appreciate your time and sharing your knowledge and the ongoing work that you do. So thank you thank so you. much for coming on the show. Absolutely. This thank you so much, cousin. Thank you. See you, everybody. All righty. Have a good evening. All right. Well, there you go. No, Martin was the secretary of the Order of the Laurel when they um, when they called me to the order, and he was the most calming person there because it was at a crown. So there's already a bunch of things going on, and there's a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth. I can't believe they gave it to him. What were they thinking? You know all that kind of stuff. And and Martin was one of those. Okay, here's this cave. You can go in here and chill. He was. He's he's been an absolute friend for a long, long time, and and uh, just a true patron of the arts. Uh, whether it is one that he practices, and he pr practices a prodigious number of them, or not, so uh, we're very fortunate to have him uh, uh, with this. Because really, Scribe Armarius getting those scrolls to people who who really want something special. I didn't get a chance to mention this, but the promissory scrolls that we give in Kaid that a lot of kingdoms give elsewhere, they're really, really wonderful because they're mostly hand-painted. It's not like back in the 70s and 80s when they just kind of took a marker to them. They're painted now. And the promissory scrolls look lovely, but if someone wants something extra special in particular, um, they work really hard to, to uh, help the, the recipient get something that is truly unique for them. And I think that's just wonderful. So much work goes into each and every scroll. It, it just Absolutely. blows me away. So uh, speaking of arts and sciences, who do we have coming on the show now? We have a dear friend of mine um, and uh, just someone who has done so much bardic for the West at the at the kingdom level, the principality level, and uh, Viscountess Ciela Thor's daughter is with us. And we're just really, really fortunate. All righty, well, let's bring her on the show. And here she comes right now. Hello. Hello, Kaid. How is everyone tonight? Well, I, I can't speak for everyone, but they seem to be doing okay if you look at the comments. So, I, I think so. So uh, was... you're, com you're coming to us from the West. Where in the West are you at? Correct. I am in the Principality of the Mist, technically the Barony of the Westermark. So mundanely, I don't know. I only have to drive about four hours to get to our beloved Great Western War site. So I'm not, not too shabby. That's nice. It's very nice. So uh, how, how are things up your way? You know, I think that everyone is doing the best they can. It's such a challenging time. And I think that everybody really appreciates times like this where you get to really reach out and connect with your friends, especially, you know, when we all would have been together this past week. Um, it makes uh, my heart very happy to be able to get together with you guys today. Oh, great. Well, we do appreciate you coming in. So um, for those of us down here that aren't that as familiar with you, how long have you been in the SCA? Yeah, I joined, goodness, um, about 2002, 2003 was when I joined. And I actually started in the SCA in the Kingdom of Aitenvelt um, and uh, in the Barony of Terizgathir, which is mundanely Tucson, Arizona. And that's where I um, I met many beloved friends and, and family. My big brother adopted me there. Um, and that's where I started singing as well. So you've been singing for a while. Is that your, would you say that's your main passion in the SCA or you 
have other interests that, that draw you in? Uh, it's definitely my main artistic passion, I would say, um, for sure. I think it's the people that really keep me in love with the SCA. All of the people that I've met, like yourself, Bjorn, I mean, yes, you, I, I mean it. <laughs> so so I, I understand you can perform two pieces for us tonight. Uh, can you tell us about the first piece? Sure. Um, I actually am going to uh, perform a piece. I know we talked about too. Um, I changed my mind at the last oh. minute. I was doing my sound check personally. Um, I am going to perform first for you a piece that I fell in love with by a friend of mine named Rosalind Jahan, and it's called The Peasant Knight or The Heart of a Warrior. And I recently fell in love with this song, so I'd like to share it with you all this evening. All righty. Well, thank you very much. The stage is yours. Yes, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> A young boy high on the battlements stood as he swept up the cold gray stones, and he gazed with delight at the lists where the banners flew, where the knights in bright armor were jousting there on their steeds of dapple and roan, and the archers drew up their longbows made of you. Oh, I have the heart of a warrior, and although I am no born, I hope one day I'll be sworn to be a knight so I can fight to serve my lord. The years passed by and the steward's son grew into a comely youth. He was strong of arm and as fair as a summer sky. But the o'er proud knight took no notice of him save occasional sharp reproof. Yet undaunted were his dreams of glory high. Oh, I have the heart of a warrior. Warrior. And although I be base born, still I hope one day I'm sworn to be a knight and pledge my might to king and lord. The knight was summoned by his majesty to war in a distant land on crusade where honor and glory could be won. He journeyed forth on his battle steed with his great sword at his hand in his retinue of men was the steward's son. Oh, I have the heart of a warrior and full glad am I this morn at his side for I have sworn to serve my my knight, so he may fight for his liege lord. The battle fierce around them raged, and the press of men was hard. The knight grew faint of heart, and fame he thought to flee. But as he turned his steed, he found the path away, oh, it was barred. And he fell from atop his horse most cowardly, for he had not the heart of a warrior. And and although he was high born, yet that day he had forsworn to be a knight, denied his vow to king and lord. The steward's son leapt into the fray, armed only with his knife, and defiant stood between his master and his foes. O oh God above, unto you I pray to protect this noble's life and to give me strength to withstand these many blows. But I have the heart of a warrior, and no matter I may scorn, for on this day I have sworn to play the knight, and I must fight to save my lord. The king rode out at the break of day, and his heart was full of woe. For his comrades dead, though a victory great was won. He found the knight unharmed within a circle of slain foes, and cradled in his arms there lay the steward's son. Oh, he has the heart of a warrior, and although he is base born, yet this day I'd have him sworn to be a knight for he would die to save his lord. The king dubbed him upon the field, arise, sir knight, said he, but the lad could not obey the king's command. And with his dying breath, he gave his oath of fealty, and he held the sword with the last touch of his hand. For he had the heart of a warrior, but for men of women born comes the day the soul has sworn 
to take to flight and dwell in sight of heaven's lord they bore him aloft upon their shields with the knight sword by his side and they buried him with the honors to his life and evermore did the humbled knight in a golden burnished sheet carry on his belt that old and rusted knife may you have the heart of a warrior and no matter how you're born for on this day you have sworn to be a knight with honor bright for king and lord for today you are reborn as a knight and you have worn the golden chain the belt of white and silver sword. Wow. Yay. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank, it's like you brought a piece of Great Western War into the show today. That was what I was hoping to do. That was amazing. I'm very glad you did. <laughs> so um, thank you so much. That was amazing. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, Appreciate the opportunity. Of course. And Bjorn, would you like to say anything before we let her go? <laughs> I just thought that was absolutely lovely. And I'm uh and once again, you just proved that some of the times when with sound checks and mic checks and other things at the last minute, we have to be able to sort of substitute one piece for another. And that's why uh especially Bardic on the fly at a webcam is not nearly as easy as some folks at home might think it is. So uh, thank you again, Your Excellency, for for uh, for rolling with the, uh, the the different directionals and and doing such an excellent job. Thank you so much. Absolutely, I have to say to any aspiring bards out there, um, you know, obviously we did our sound checks, but your your vocal sound check always pay attention to that. You know, once you uh, know what your range is, um, and oftentimes, you know. A lot of times I really, really wish that I'd saved my voice for that Saturday night bardic instead of being very excited about the Thursday night bardic at war. So remember your audience, remember your vocal cords. <laughs> well, great. Well, have a great rest of your evening. Hopefully we'll see you soon when we're able to get back together. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing your, your song with us this evening. You're very welcome. Thank you again, my friend. It was so good to see you. Absolutely, happy to do it. Wow, that was amazing. It really was. And I'm so very thankful that she was able to to still perform for us this evening. And uh, uh, and I, that's just the thing. Sometimes people really don't know just how insidious ash and those kinds of things can be. You Even when we're wearing masks and we go out amongst folks, you're still breathing in some form of particulates. And and now more than ever with the dry weather being what it is, vocal health is a lot more precarious than people would would be led to believe. I mean, that's, that's the reason why I don't sing professionally as much anymore myself is because of vocal injury. So it's it's um, it's um definitely a, a pernicious thing that, that you have to be wary of. Right, and you know, um, back when things were normal, um, I would, I, I'm part of, um, improv troupe that does singing, but my singing's for a comedic effect. So, you know, you can understand that. Well, never let it be said that, you know, your, your voice voice got you where you needed it to go. <laughs> well, I feel so much better now. So <laughs> uh, let's, let's look at next week. So next week, our guests, we're going to be talking with the Society of Rapier Marshal, talking about um, uh, the new rule set, uh, her her medical background has been informing a lot of the changes that have been coming down and get a bigger perspective again uh, what's happening in that combat form on a more broader worldwide society level sense. And as for the Bardic performances? We have joining us from the mid-room, uh, Master Andreas Blackwood is going to be joining us. And um, we're just really excited uh, to um, have him join us. Uh, and, and it's just... Once again, it's one of those wonderful things where we're, granted, we would have just had a war, so we might have seen people from other kingdoms that, that Kitans might not have normally seen, but something that this show has been able to do routinely over the last seven months um, is uh, is get a chance to to see these wonderful performers all across 
the, the known world and uh, Master Andreas is certainly one of them. So we're, we're very fortunate. Well, great. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, again, my friend, thank you for everything you've done this week. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Yes, sir. And uh, to all the viewers, we'll see you next week. And once again, we will be live from Kaid. We'll see you then. Have a great Bye, night. Everyone.